In this video, I'll show you the pros and cons of both high-speed sync flash and normal flash when shooting location portraits. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today you join me on location at the Gatwick Aviation Museum, as you'll probably see and hear, we're right next to Gatwick Airport. I'm going to do some portraits using flash, and you might think that means high-speed sync flash, and it really is a great tool. But is it the best tool for the job? Well, I'm going to do a couple of situations where it works really well, and a few where you don't really need it. So let's get some light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. She's going to be the model for this shoot, and we're going to start with high-speed sync, because that's probably what you're going to use in a situation like this. And high-speed sync has a couple of uses. I'm really only going to look at one, and that is for a shallower depth of field. I've got an f2.8 lens, that's what I want to shoot at. But normally I'd be limited to my camera's flash sync speed of 250th of a second, and as a result, if I shot at those settings, I'd end up with a really bright sky that doesn't look too good. Well, that's where high speed sync comes in because I can go faster than my flash sync speed by simply pressing the high speed sync button on my remote control. With that pressed, I can go all the way up to 8,000th of a second. I don't think we need it today, it's overcast and really breezy, so I'm going to go for about a 4,000th of a second shutter speed. Now, if I take a picture at 4,000th of a second without flash, here's how it looks. So now there's detail in the sky, but Chloe is clearly underexposed. And high speed sync flash, really simple. I'm just going to use that to fill in the shadows on Chloe's face. So turn it on. And well, this is where high speed sync slightly comes unstuck because I can't meter for this. I need to work it out by trial and error. So let's start in the middle of the range, maybe one eighth power. See how this looks. Here we go, Chloe. Just look towards the light for me. And that looks just a little bit too bright. So I'm going to turn down the flash until I get it exactly how I want it. And with a little bit of jiggling around, I found a nice balance at 2,000th of a second, f2.8, ISO 200, and my flash is on 132nd power. Let's take some shots like this. Okay, Chloe, here we go. That's great. So we move location, and in this case, I don't need high-speed sync. Here's what we've got. We've got Chloe stood against the plane, so the background is really close. There's no shallow depth of field going on here. I've also swapped lenses. I've gone for a wide angle lens. The wider the angle of the lens, the more depth of field you get. So even if I were shooting at f2.8 with a wider angle lens, my depth of field would still be a lot. So there's no point doing shallow depth of field, high-speed sync. So let's use normal flash, and that has a few advantages. Firstly, I can actually meter it if I want to, that's a good thing. It saves a bit of battery, it saves a bit of power, it recycles a bit quicker, lots of good things, and you get more power from standard flash than you do high-speed sync. So if you need to overpower the sun, that's the way to go. However, the technique is exactly the same. First thing to do is to establish the exposure without flash. So let's turn off my trigger, and I'm still in manual mode. I'm gonna go for F11 aperture, why not? I'll be at my flash sync speed of 250th of a second. Let's see what we get without flash. Here we go. And I've got pretty good detail in the sky, so that looks fine for me. The other advantage of not using high speed sync flash is I can use my flash meter to work out how much light comes out of this flash. So let's get it in closer. Let's get the flash meter and we'll pop it underneath Chloe's chin and I'll adjust it until it reads F11. And when it reads F11, I know I've got exactly the right amount of light and I can shoot away. Here we go. Well, 
Although I actually love using high-speed sync flash, a wider lens or a smaller aperture is a great way to show a lot more of the location. So it breaks down like this. If you want a lovely, dreamy, blurry background in your location portraits, you're going to need the right lens and the right aperture to make that happen. Then High Speed Seek is a great tool because it just simply works. Plus it avoids all that old school messing around with neutral density filters. But if your model is close to the background, or you're using a wider angle lens, or you simply want the absolute maximum power from your flash, then forget about high speed sync flash. Stick to normal flash, because that does a great job. So that was great fun and worked really well. And hopefully you realize now that high speed sync is a great tool, but it's not always the best tool. It's whatever you need to get the shot you want. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment below. If you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.